Hello everyone, my name is Cameron, welcome back to the channel, and as you can see, my hair is getting extremely long. Uh, today we're going to be doing the NXT TakeOver Vengeance Day uh, predictions. Uh, I also need to shave, if you haven't noticed. Um, yeah, quarantine hair, man. Just, just haven't wanted to get it cut. I say quarantine hair, I, I've, had, I've been growing this out since before quarantine. For those of you wondering, because I know somebody probably is, um, I got my hair cut last October 2019. Uh, I went down to Florida in November for vacation of that year, and I got it cut right before I went down, and I went like the 7th of November, so I got it cut like late October, early November, and I haven't got it cut since. <laughs> and I didn't expect, you know, a pandemic to just start out of nowhere. And uh, when the pandemic started, I just decided not to get it cut. Um, until we were basically out of lockdown in Michigan and it, we're basically still in lockdown. Michigan's still kind of one of the harder states to do anything in. But you know, it's it's, it's whatever, it's, it's fine. It's not like my hair gets in my face every time I eat or anything. On with predictions. Uh, so yeah. NXT TakeOver Avengers Day. Sorry, my brain just kind of lapsed there for a second. So first, we have the NXT Women's Championship Triple Threat Match. Io Shirai versus Tony Storm versus Raquel Gonzalez. Or Mercedes Martinez. Sorry, I keep getting them confused. They both kind of remind me of each other. They're both big, really, like, strong, muscular women who kind of scare the shit out of me and are badasses. Uh, we've both gone for Shirai. Both Jesse and myself have gone for Io Shirai to retain. Um... I think Tony is definitely a good competitor for this. I think she definitely is somebody who could take the title. Same with Mercedes, but I don't really see EO losing the title just yet. She won it. How far back did she win it? And take over 30. Nope. Before that. In your house. She won it in your house, which was right after Money in the Bank last year. So like May. May, June of last year, somewhere around there, she won the championship so it hasn't been a year yet it's close it's getting closer but i definitely think she has more time in her title run i think when they do decide to take the title off of io Shirai, my guess is she's going main roster i've been hearing lots of rumors about other people going up main roster i don't know for sure if a lot of them are true or how many of them have any merit to them but obviously we've already seen damien priest has gone up and he was rumored to have been getting called up earlier this year uh, and or, and late last year, uh, Rhea Ripley, who was also rumored to be getting called up the same time as Damien Priest, is now officially on the main roster. She just has yet to make her debut for either Raw or SmackDown. Um, so it, it's very possible that we could be seeing more call-ups in the near future. Um, Io Shirai potentially being one of them. I could potentially see Tony Storm also moving up to the main roster at some point. Uh, maybe even Mercedes Martinez if she decides that that's what she wants to do. Um, I know... Her first trip on the main roster, <clears throat> looking at you, Retribution, didn't go so well. So, uh, who knows? Maybe she'll get, uh, maybe she'll get a little bit of a better chance the second time around if she decides to go back up. Uh, next, we have the Women's Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic Finals. We have Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez versus Shotzi Blackheart and Ember Moon. Jesse and I have both gone for Ember Moon and Shotzi Blackheart. The winners of this will get a chance at the Women's Tag Team Championships. Um, I don't think either team is going to win if they do um, go, when they go on to the match. I just, I'm just i not trying to say anything bad about the four competitors in the finals for the Women's Dusty Cup. I just don't expect either, any of them, either of those teams to win against Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler. Um, it does make me wonder, though, when are they going to get that championship opportunity? Because here's the thing. We already know that Naomi and uh, Lana have a chance at the championships. They won a number one contender uh, contenders match uh, a couple weeks ago on Raw to determine who the number one contender would be to that. Um, I think that was like the day after the Raw after the Royal Rumble, I believe. Um, and Jackson Baszler are the current champions, meaning Naomi and Lana are most likely the next uh, competitors to be facing them. My guess, if anything, Lana Naomi is probably fast lane for the tag team for the women's tag championships, and then maybe Mania will be the Dusty Cup finals. Because normally the Dusty Cup winners get their tag team match around Mania slash takeover before the takeover before Mania. Obviously, we don't have a takeover for Mania this year. 
it's just a two night WrestleMania again. So it makes me think that they're probably going to be doing uh, potentially the women's tag team championship match with the Dusty Cup winners on the main show or probably the pre-show for Mania or maybe the something on day one for Mania. Um, and then same, maybe the same with the, the NXT tag team championships. I wouldn't mind all of the NXT championships being defended on on Mania's card, to be honest. We have two days of it. it. We have plenty of space for it. I say go for it. Put fucking the NXT tag titles, put the NXT North American, put the NXT championship and the NXT women's championship on the line at Mania. Why not? It's not like we have a takeover at that time, so it doesn't matter. Next, we have the men's Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic Finals. We have MSK versus Grizzled Young Veterans. And this is where Jesse and I disagree. Uh, I have gone for MSK and he's gone for Grizzled Young Veterans. Now, however... I do not care who wins this one. I Either way, I'm going to be happy. I like Grizzled Young Veterans. I like MSK so far from what I've seen of them. I've never seen anything of them in TNA as the Radicals or the Rascals. Rascals. The Rascals. The Radicals is a different faction from way back in the day. Uh, but I never saw anything about them in the as the Rascals. But from what I've read on Wikipedia, they seem like a really good tag team. And I'm very excited either way for who wins this match. Um, whether MSK wins, giving Grizzle the Young Veterans their second loss in the Dusty Cup Finals in a row. Or if Grizzle the Young Veterans make up for last year's defeat at the hands of uh, Dunn and Riddle. Uh, and, and pull off a, a victory this year. I don't, honestly, like I said, I don't care. I like both teams. Um, I could see either team potentially becoming champions. Now the real question is, who do I see the most likely losing to uh, the current tag team champions of Oni Larkin and Danny Birch, and that's probably GYV. No offense to Grizzled Young Veterans, but I feel like if anyone's going to be losing to them, it's not going to be the new up-and-coming tag team that they have getting ready for it. Um, so maybe MSK gets the win here, and then some shenanigans happen that cause Larkin and Birch to lose, but not lose the titles. I don't know. I'm not sure where this is going to go, because either way, MSK has to lose in some fashion or not get the titles in some fashion. Because I think it might be a little early to put it on them just just for now. I, I could be wrong. They could just straight screw it and put the titles right on MSK. Or they could say screw it and have Grizzled Young Veterans win it. I don't really know where it's going. Um, either way, I'm fine with it. I, I'm going to enjoy the match regardless. They're both great teams. And uh, I'm very excited. Next, we have the NXT Championship match. We have Finn Balor versus Pete Dunne. We've both gone for Finn Balor. Um, I love Pete Dunne. Don't get me wrong. Pete Dunne's great. Um, you know... Uh, second longest reign with the UK Championship. I don't know if he's gotten past yet. Let's go check real quick. I'm assuming he has the second longest reign now, but I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Uh, Walter may not have passed him yet. So, so we do have to. We have to look really quick. So Walter. five days away from beating him so today is the 14th i'm assuming this is based off of the 13th um the 13th so yesterday uh so he's at six potentially at 681 today so by the time this week ends he will have beaten pete dunn's reign as longest reigning nxt uk champion i mean technically i know technically he was the WWE United Kingdom champion when Pete had his 685-day reign. But still, obviously, if he's going to take it, it's going to be a situation of he's going to literally be the UK champion for 600, over 685. Holy shit. That's insane. That's that's absolutely So he won it the 5th of April, 2019. So I can actually Google. We can, we can actually take today's date. Uh, so, so we want to do minus the 9th of April 2019. Calculate. Huh? Oh, whoops. Oh, 
that's weird. Oh, I see. Okay, one sec. So we just want to take 680 days. Okay, so it is not, it is not updated. So today is his 300 or 681st day as NXT UK champion. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Thursday he ties it. Friday he beats it. So Friday will be his 686th day as champion. So unless Walter loses the championship by the oh shit i'll do that when i'm trying to check what my battery's at um unless he loses it by friday he will beat uh pete dunn's reign which is absolutely insane to me because holy shit i didn't think his reign would be beaten so fucking quick the fact that his reign went from the 20th of may 2017 to the 5th of april 2019 and we're now in january 2021 or February 2021, sorry. And uh, Walter is still... There's really three UK champions, you guys. I'm pretty sure the women's champion has had more. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that the women's championship has had more people hold the champion so far <laughs> than the men's. No, it's also only had three. What the fuck although it's been around for a lot less time and kaylee ray is curly in her 532nd probably 533rd day actually as champion dude oh, okay if the tag team has also had three we i'm pretty sure there's been more there's been more champions in this one but i'm not gonna count are you fucking kidding me <laughs> Oh my god, there's also only been three. <laughs> Although this one's only been around since 2019, so that's a little bit better. But again, the recognized days by WWE for the current champions, Gallus, is 485 plus because of tape delay. It should technically be 498 plus, meaning they have almost two weeks taken off of their title reign from when they actually won it. Jesus. Um, and then, yeah, the Heritage Cup has only had one. Um, but damn, that's insane. So Friday, Pete Dunne is no longer the longest reigning United Kingdom champion. And they have to start coming up with something else to say about him. That was a long, long tangent. But I don't think Dunne's going to win this. I think he's going to lose. Um, I don't personally, I love Pete Dunne. Jesse and I both love Pete Dunne. It's just Balor has had such a dominant reign. And even with his jaw being fucking shattered at one point he's had such a dominant reign as champion i don't see him losing it in the near future and i definitely don't see him losing it to pete dunn if he's gonna lose it i'd expect carrying cross around mania that'd be when i would think he'd lose it but even then i still think balor's got the edge just just saying like personally i think balor would come out on top of that um but we'll see i guess i i fully expect balor to have a decently lengthy run with the championship before he does drop it um so maybe like how long has he had it actually i can't actually go look i'm dumb we can go look through the nxc takeover stuff uh that's war games i just realized he didn't defend on war games i forgot about that he was injured wasn't he so there's Balor and O'Reilly when they both broke each other's jaws. Uh, okay, so between Takeover Thirty, which was just before August, just before August, is when. It, so he got it probably between. Ah, oh fuck! I might have to look at his reign actually, aren't I? So he probably got it between like August and around August. September-ish, I'd say. Oh, damn it. I have to look up more. I'm going to get off on another tangent, you guys, because I'm an idiot. NXT Championship. Stupid thing. It's dumb. This thing's dumb sometimes. Uh, Reigns. Oh, I forgot. There's a fucking separate. This is how many people have actually fucking held this championship. As I, it's only been 22 or 21. So he won it September 8th, 2020. Um... So he's held it for 
Because he fucking held it. 155 days. So October, November, December, January, February 8th. Would have been five months. So a little over five months he's held it. I don't see him losing it anytime soon. Um, if, if he's going to lose it anytime soon, I think it will be probably about August, probably about August ish, maybe depending on how long they want to give him this run. Um, current longest reign is Adam Cole Bay base with, uh, 403 days recognized by WWE. Uh, actually, he only held it for 396 days. They gave him another seven because of tape delay. But yeah. Um, yeah, I, I 403 days. That's that's not bad. Uh, Keith Lee, recognized for only 44 days. That kind of sucks. Um, Karrion Cross is recognized for only three out of a four day. <laughs> Poor Karrion Cross. That's got to suck, dude. That's really got to suck. Um, but yeah, so yeah, Balor currently at 155 plus. Uh, I think 156 as of today. So, uh, yeah, he's definitely, I think, got a lot of chance to continue his run going forward and uh, maybe go over a year. Maybe not. Who knows? And finally, the final match for NXT TakeOver Vengeance Day, we have the North American, the NXT North American Championship. We have Johnny Gargano versus Kushida. We have both gone for Kushida. Now, our thinking is this. At Austin Theory, I almost said Adam Theory. Austin Theory is going to try to get involved in the match in some way because, of course, he is. That's the way. Um, he's going to be taken out by Dexter Loomis, and it's going to be magnifique. Um, I'm going to love it. I love Dexter Loomis. He's like literally one of my favorite people right now in NXT. Um, he's probably going to be taken out by Dexter Loomis, which is going to cause Johnny in some way to lose the match. And I think that that is like a really good way for him to lose it. Like not really his fault. And he can kind of blame it on Austin that he lost. Um, and I like that idea. I, I think that him losing it is at this point, the right move, especially if it's to a star like Kushida, who could really use a title and have him be elevated. Um, I've again, also heard rumors that Johnny could go up to the main roster at some point. I know back a couple years ago, he didn't want to. I know Ciampa didn't want to because of the travel, which as of right now, obviously travel doesn't matter. Um, but I know a lot of people didn't want to go up to the main roster for one reason or another. Johnny said he doesn't want to go up to it. I feel like at some point he's going to go up to it kind of regardless. He doesn't really have much of a choice. They want to call him up. They want to call him up. I guess he can still choose to stay in NXT. But obviously as him and Candice get further in their lives, I'm sure they want to potentially settle down and have, ki or have kids. And I think the, the salary that you'd get from the main roster would probably be a little bit more uh, of a, a, a big incentive to move up to the main roster. And really quick, because we might as well, this video's already gone off on a lot of tangents. Uh, we're going to talk about the current matches for the Elimination Chamber, which is uh, a week from today, so the 21st of February. Happy Valentine's Day, I should have mentioned that earlier. Uh, currently, we have five matches for Elimination Chamber. I'm not going to be doing predictions for them uh, in this video. Obviously, it's going to be its own video next week um, after we've gotten through this week's wrestling. Uh, but currently, we do have five matches. We have the Raw Women's Champion. Uh, Asuka defending against Lacey Evans. We have Kevin. Uh, we have United States Champion Bobby Lashley defending against Keith Lee and Riddle in a triple threat match. Uh, we have the WWE Champion Drew McIntyre defending his title inside the Elimination Chamber against AJ Styles, Jeff Hardy, Randy Orton, Sheamus, and The Miz. I personally don't like The Miz being in this. I don't like Randy Orton being in this. Sheamus, Jeff, AJ, completely fine with. I wish. Miz and Randy would have been for two newer guys, especially because Miz has the Money in the Bank briefcase, although it does kind of give a nice little idea that maybe the Miz will get eliminated and then come back into the match at the end and cash in and potentially win the... I'm not going to say he's going to win the championship. I doubt he's going to win the championship, but it'd be a nice storyline to have him cash in right at the end. One, because he'd be copying Edge from his initial one and probably piss Edge off a little bit. But two... It's because I think it'd be kind of cool. I, I think it'd be cool to see somebody who was in the chamber who has the money in the bank briefcase defend, like get eliminated early on and then come back at the end of the match and cash in. Um, I think it's stupid that the Miz is in this match in the first place. I know Adam Pierce is, oh, 
I want to have, it's going to be former WWE champions, blah, blah. Dude, that's such a stupid thing though. Cause like you're limited and I've gone through this. Like I looked at the Raw and SmackDown rosters. The amount of former WWE champions each roster has is very fucking minimal. And I'm counting only former WWE world heavyweight champions. Not talking about universal champions here. Just the former WWE world heavyweight champions were counted. And it's like the sit like raw that's all of raws basically right there and then jinder mahal is is basically it for raw um i think there was like one or two other people on raw that or maybe one other person who the fuck was it who was it there was one other person on raw that i saw besides jinder but again it was like really they're not gonna put him in the fucking match so it was really dumb and then like smackdown was like even lower for former WWE champions i'm like dude I'm like, why is this a thing? <laughs> like, you guys could have done so much better with this. You could have done amazing things and put, like, newer guys in this, too. You could have taken out... You could have had it be, like, Drew, AJ, Jeff, and then taken Randy, Sheamus... Well, I'm pissed that they're taking away Sheamus versus Drew, because that's what they made it seem like. Even before Raw went on the air on Monday, they made it seem like it was going to be Drew versus Sheamus in a one-on-one -on -one match at the Chamber, and they lied to us. They fucking lied to us. They baited us in. I hope to God it's at Fastlane. It better be Fastlane's main event for that fucking feud. Because if it's not, I'm going to be pissed. Especially with the move over to Peacock. Not very fucking excited about that. But I'm going to be pissed if Sheamus and Drew is not on the card at Fastlane. Because if it's not, it's fucking pointless. Then there was the person. Uh, and then there's the SmackDown Chamber match, which is just more of a fucking headache. So it's Kevin Owens, Jey Uso, King Corbin, Sami Zayn, Cesaro, and Daniel Bryan. And the winner will go on to face Roman Reigns later in the night for the Universal Championship. It's just Roman politicking more, and I fucking hate it. After the bullshit that happened at the Royal Rumble, this is the bullshit they pull for my favorite fucking pay-per-view of the year. Well, maybe third favorite. I don't know. My top three, if you guys don't know, by the way, are Royal Rumble, Money in the Bank, and the Elimination Chamber. Because I like Carnage. It's cool, man. I just like crazy shit. But to take away the fact that I want to see Roman having his face fucking ground against the goddamn cage, and you guys are taking that from me, kind of pisses me off just a little bit. Just, just a little bit. Especially after the bullshit at Royal Rumble. I am growing tired of Roman Reigns' title run already. I'm, I'm not enjoying it anymore. I'm tired of it. I'm tired. Of, I'm getting tired of Drews because like they keep facing them against the same people, and it's like stop. Just put them against somebody else. There's other fucking superstars they can face. All I know is whoever wins the chamber match for SmackDown, good luck against Roman because uh, there's probably more backstage politicking going on. It. I do like there was a suggestion though because Roman's trying to force Edge to choose him. Someone's like, oh. Ed should just, or Roman should just replace the Universal Championship with the World Heavyweight Championship so that way Edge has to face him because then he literally, that's literally the championship he never lost. But to me, obviously, the World Heavyweight Championship was unified with the WWE Championship and is now the belt that Drew holds. Um, so, I mean, it'd be cool. I'd, I'd love the big gold belt back. I'd love that championship, but yeah. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it was a long one and I went off on a lot of tangents. So I hope you guys have enjoyed my ramblings at 4 50 a.m 4 45 a.m whatever time it is right now about 4 42 whatever um i will see you guys for the review stay golden peace